Hey everybody, it's yours truly, Mr. Lang, Team Wash Life, teamwashlife.com. Check it out. You won't be disappointed. Listen, I'm uh, in the process of uploading a 20 minute long video playing around on the customer factor, trying to show you how I personally have my estimates laid out and uh, kind of some of the email features and some of the features the customer factor has to offer. Um, it was a requested video that I've been meaning to get up for some time now like a week. Um, it got me thinking though of other things. Whenever uh, you're out to do like a big estimate or whenever I'm out to, out to do an estimate really of any sorts, even if it's residential, I take pictures and I upload it to their file. The pictures I always make, I always make sure that at least four pictures are taken. Um, and we came across this rule when I started having either my brother well, really my brother, I'd have him go do estimates and he'd come back with like one picture sometimes because I'd tell him, make sure you take pictures of like damages and stuff. And he'd be like, there was nothing. So I said, we got to take at least four pictures. So front, so north, south, east, and west. Basically front, both sides, and the back at the bare minimum. That's if I need to go back and look at this project, I can at least see what each side looks like, or maybe they got power washing done and now they want windows, I can pull up their file and still count the windows. Um, and I can just get a general idea of what it looks like all the way around. Um, but I typically do all four pictures and then I'll hone in on like damages or trouble spots or just tricky areas that might be tough, like maybe there's like a tight fence or something. Um, just things that might be an obstacle or, or tricky, we, we take pictures of that too. Um, here's another good point, and I actually learned this from a guy who does bigger projects. Um, it was a post that had popped up on a Facebook group some time ago, but it just, it, for some reason, talking about this stuff got me thinking of it. Doing like the proposals and all that stuff, especially for the big contracts, like the bigger bids, they take time. Like they, they definitely, there's no way around it. They definitely take time. Um, I mean, it could take hours putting that stuff together and getting your pictures and thinking everything through and making sure you dot all your T's, cross your I's. Um, sometimes if the opportunity is appropriate, if they contact you for a bid, at least, you could throw it out there, you know, especially if you're not excited about doing it, you could throw it out there and be like, listen, I've been doing this for a little while. I know what we're looking at. Um, I could tell you, you know, I, I, I want to get a, a proposal put together for you and really, you know, get everything dialed in and get you an exact number. But I can tell you already, we're going to be in the ballpark of about 10 grand. You know, and you can kind of wait, see what they say. Or you can even say, you know, is, is that even in your guys' ballpark? Because to be honest with you, these proposals take quite a bit of time. And if we're not on the same page, I'd hate to, you know, waste our time. Uh, you know, you could use better wording than that. But it, it's not a bad idea to throw that out there, especially if it's something you're not super excited about. And if they say... Uh, you know, if they respond with, you know, that's kind of like, we were kind of thinking it'd be somewhere around there, then you know, okay, you can, you can proceed with the proposal, you know that they're willing to pay at least 10 grand, and uh, it's, it's, it's worth your time at least to give it a shot. So, I hope that helps. This was video was meant to be five minutes or less, and I'm on track. And uh, it's yours truly, Mr. Lang, Team Wash Life.